Well, today we're going to do Sola de Gloria. Can I have it quiet, please? Do you know Latin? I don't think so. So the question is, guys, the question is, what is glory? What is it? I don't see hands. Yes. Okay, praise. Honor. Anybody else? Okay. So praise and honor. According to the dictionary, glory means high renown or honor won by notable achievements. So we have sola de gloria, and which is glory to God alone, right? Why do you think this would be part of the Reformation, the fifth sola? Why do you think sola de gloria will be part of the fifth one of the Reformation? Yes. Very good. Did you guys hear him? I didn't think so. They want the, he said the, because the church, the Catholic Church, wanted to give glory to the priests and the popes instead of giving glory to God. And so, sola de gloria means glory to God alone. Let me show you an illustration. expensive car, would you agree? That's right. That's one mode of transportation. Those are extras that, that's being sell, sold off. Extras, yep. Now, an example of this would be, guys, what Martin Luther was pointing out and the other reformers, guys, was the extravagance of Rome and the priests, Pilots, and everybody else compared to the lowly Jesus. Because Jesus, here's Jesus' mode of transportation we rode into Jerusalem. Right? So there's a, a stark contrast here. So the question is, what is glory? When we think of glory, sometimes we think of like the brightness or the awe of God. Do you guys ever think about that? Well, Moses, back in the Exodus 33 verse 18, asked God, Show me your glory. Right? And fortunately for us, God responded to him and said, Okay. He said, I will make all my fast before you. That's kind of odd, right? Show me your glory, and then God responds, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you. All his glory would kill him. That didn't make much sense because uh, according to the dictionary definition, glory is like honor, renowned, the majesty, right? But God's definition here is my goodness is my glory. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious and I'll have compassion upon who, I'm, who I will have compassion. So grace, compassion, and proclaim the name of the Lord, my goodness. This is all of God's what? His glory. But he said, you cannot see my what? You cannot see my face. Boys in the back, pay attention. You cannot see my face and live. And the Lord said, here's a place by me and you shall stand on the rock so it will, shall be, while my glory passes by, 
that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand while I will pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be what? Here's interesting, right? So God just said, I will cause all my what to pass before you? Goodness. He says, I'll have compassion upon who I'll have compassion, and, and uh, mercy upon who I'll have mercy. He'll proclaim the name of the Lord. But then he says, but you can't see my face. If you see my face, you're going to what? God. God. So here's another aspect of glory, is there is actually a brightness that shines forth from God, and that is his glory, but it also shines forth his goodness. Desire of Ages, 20, page 21.2 says, But turning from the lesser representations, we behold God in what? I can't hear you. Jesus. Louder. Jesus. Thank you. Looking unto Jesus, we see that it is the glory of God to what? Yes. It's the glory of God to what? Yes. Okay. So here we have a contrast. We saw like the king on his throne, right? And it's like, wow, majesty. And you saw the Pope with the vehicles and the cars. And, and that, that's his splendor and glory. But God, God says, my glory is to what? Give. Think about that. God's majesty, his honor, his brightness is all summed up in giving. He doesn't want to just take it for himself. He wants to give to others. He says, I do nothing of myself, said Christ. The living Father has what? Sent me. And I live by the Father. I seek not my own glory, but the glory of him that sent me. In these words is set forth the great principle, which is the law of life for the what? Now, does that include us? Does that include us? Yes. We are part of the universe, aren't we? Yes. So in these words is set forth the great principle, which is the law of life for the universe. All things Christ received from God, but took to what? He took to what? Give. He took to give. So in the heavenly courts, in his ministry for all created beings, through the beloved Son, the Father's life flows out to all. Through the Son, it returns in praise and joyous service, a tide of love to the great source of all. And thus through Christ, the circuit of beneficence is complete, representing the character of the great giver, the law of life. So somebody raise their hand and tell me what is going on in the relationship with God the Father and the Son. We just read it here, it's on the screen. Who can tell me how glory to give works? It's on the screen. You can look. Okay, yes. Okay, so Jesus takes it from who? Jesus takes it from who? The Father. The Father. The Father gives it to Jesus, and where does Jesus give it back to? It gives it back to the Father. We'll read it here again. The Father's life flows out to all... Through the sun, it returns. In what? How does it return to God? Praise, joyous service, tide of love, the great source is all. Now, how does this apply to us? Because that's the most important part, right? Desire of Ages, page 330. But in the heart of Christ... Wait for the tractor. But in the heart of Christ, where reigned perfect harmony with God, there was perfect peace. He was never elated by applause. What does that mean? What does it mean not to be elated by applause? Okay, yeah. When it's, it's like an exciting feeling, right? Like, like, yeah, people are clapping for me. I mean, how many of you have felt good when somebody says 
uh, give you a clap or a pat on the back. It feels good, doesn't it? But it says Jesus, Jesus was never elated. He was never excited by applause. Nor dejected voice. I'm talking to you. Nor dejected by censor. He was never discouraged when censored or disappointment. And with the greatest opposition and the most cruel treatment, he was still of good courage. So how does this apply? Why don't we, or should, I should say this, why shouldn't we clap in church for the speaker or the musician? Right? Yes? Okay, you're giving praise to the person and not what God has done to the person. Very good. Sierra, do you want to add to that? Yes, because remember when Herod took all the praise, he got worms and the worms him up? Yes, that's right. He took glory to himself. Yeah, when we, when we clap for a, a speaker or a, a musician, we're saying, you did a good job, right? And it, and it makes them feel like, yeah, I like it. But reality is, God should receive the glory, right? Amen. Because God does it through them. That's why we shouldn't clap in church for the presenter or the speaker. The only time it's appropriate is if it's for God himself. Okay, he wasn't dejected by censor or disappointment. This is another one. Yes, you want to say something? If we're not going to clap or shouldn't clap, and I agree with that, what's an appropriate response? Amen. Why is amen an appropriate response? Yeah, and amen says it shall be, right? Amen. Alright. So again, he was not dejected, he was not dejected or discouraged by censor or disappointment. So when Jesus when Jesus, listen up now, was put on the cross. Do you think that felt good? No. I mean, think about this. Jesus left everything in heaven. All the praise of the angels, all the praise of the universe, all the, the happiness and joy to come to this earth to save you and I, and he was rejected, spit upon, beaten, and he was nailed to a cross. Do you think you would be like, why am I doing this? What was Jesus' response to all that treatment? Can I have a hand? Yes. Very good. Jesus' response was, Lord, what? Forgive them. Now, when somebody mistreats you, how do you need to respond? That's right. We need to have the same response of Jesus. It's difficult, though. Would you agree? When somebody's mistreating you? But many who profess to be his followers have an anxious, troubled heart because they're afraid to trust themselves with God. So that's us. Talking about us. We're followers of Jesus, right? Seth, pay attention. But many who profess to be his followers have an anxious, troubled heart because they're afraid to trust themselves with who? With God. They do not make a complete surrender to him, for they shrink from the consequences of that such a surrender may involve. Unless they do make the surrender, they cannot find peace. Now here's a hard one. What is the fifth commandment? Oh, good. Some of you got it memorized. Good job, parents. Honor thy father and mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Honor thy what? Father and mother. Listen now to this. And it's too bad the parents aren't here to hear this. Parents, 
are entitled to a degree of love and respect which is due to no other person. God himself, who has placed upon them a responsibility for the souls committed to their charge, has, notice the yellow, ordained that during the early years of life, parents shall stand in the place of who? To their children. And he who rejects the rightful authority of his parents is rejecting the authority of who? Have you ever thought about it that way? If you're disobeying your parents, you're disobeying God. Now, obviously, and I'm going to make this correction, if your parents are telling you to do something that's not in line with what God teaches, should you do it? No. Okay, just make sure you're clear on that. The fifth commandment requires children not only to yield respect, submission, and obedience to their parents, but also to give them love and tenderness. So, yes, you are to honor your family, your parents, and do as they say, but it is their obligation in return to love and respect and give you tenderness, to lighten their cares and to guard their reputation, and to succor and comfort them in old age. It also enjoins respect for ministers and rulers, that would be the pastors here, and all others to whom God has delegated authority. That means, listen up kids, when one of the pastors says you're out, you're out. No arguing. Philippians 2.14, do all things without complaining and disputing. So when your parents or one of us ask you to do something, or a teacher asks you to do something, you're to do it without? Now that applies to me. Whatever I do, I'm not to do it without with complaining as well. Or, what's that word? Disputing, arguing, right? That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Do you want to be blameless? Do you want to be harmless? I hope so. Because if you do, among whom you shall shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that you may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Basically, that you might have salvation. Close with this illustration. What are these? Oxen. That's right. And what's that on the oxen's necks? A yoke. A yoke. Now, imagine yourselves with that yoke on your neck trying to pull that load that they're pulling. Do you think you could do it? Maybe, maybe if we tied all of you to uh, the yoke, you might be able to do it. But yoke, the oxen are much stronger than we are. And therefore, we, it's, it's much easier for them to do the work than for us. Listen to this. The yoke is placed upon the oxen to aid them in drawing the load, to lighten the burden. The burden of who? The farmer, right? So with the yoke of Christ, when our will is swallowed up in the will of God and we use his gifts to bless others, we shall find life's burdens light. He who walks in the way of God's commandment is walking in the company with Christ and in his love the heart is at rest. So this is a difficult thing to give glory to God when somebody's like, great job, you did excellent. Because we, we want to receive that pat on our back, right? We want to receive the praise. But God can help us to give the glory to him. And when we give the glory to him, actually, we'll have greater joy and we'll have greater peace in our lives. When Moses prayed, show now the, that way, show now, show me now the, thy way, that I may know thee, the Lord answered him, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. That's it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, only you can give us the ability to give you the glory, to surrender all to you, that we might find that perfect peace, 
and that perfect rest. I pray that you help the kids seated here before you, you that you help the staff who are helping out, Lord, that we might all work together for the glory of your name and surrender all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What do we say? Amen. 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 Not yet. <laughs>